This is Dr. Tuckman. I'm going to be talking about an open reduction internal fixation through a volar approach of a proximal interphalangeal joint dorsal fracture dislocation. This is a 45-year-old male who suffered this injury trying to catch a football. The x-ray findings can be very subtle and can be very easily missed or underappreciated. There is dorsal subluxation of the middle phalanx with a dorsal V sign, as well as there is a volar rim fracture with articular impaction. Because of this articular impaction, this injury is not amenable to a dynamic external fixator such as the AG turnkey. Under digital block anesthesia with light sedation, a trapezoidal incision was made over the volar aspect of the proximal interphalangeal joint. Using sharp dissection, the flap is elevated superficial to the nerve vascular bundle. The nerve vascular bundle is identified and the dissection is taken down to the flexor sheath. The interval between the A2 and the A4 pulley is entered. The flap is elevated and preserved. This would be used later to restore the smooth gliding surface of the flexor sheath. The joint is entered between the accessory collateral and the volar plate. The collateral ligaments are released off the proximal phalanx. The volar plate is then released distally off of the insertion on the middle phalanx. Releasing of the collateral ligaments as well as the volar plate is then performed in the radial aspect of the joint. The joint is then hyperextended and shotgunned opened. At this point, the volar rim fracture, as well as the articular impaction, is easily appreciated. The volar rim is gently elevated in order to gain access to the fracture site. The articular fragment is elevated, taking care to bring as much metaphyseal bone with the fragment as possible. I've not found bone grafting in these fractures as necessary. I'm using a Medartis 1.5 millimeter plate with 1.2 millimeter screws. I like the plate that has the more proximal extending transverse bar to give increased support for the volar rim. I trim the plate to reduce the amount of hardware which is used. Care is taken not to over tighten the screws which can narrow the joint. Anatomic reduction of the fracture is achieved.
the volar plate is then repaired to the collateral ligament in order to prevent volar instability. The flexor sheath is then positioned dorsal to the flexor tendons to cover the plate and restore a smooth gliding surface for the flexor tendons. Patient was placed in an ulnar gutter splint. Two days postoperatively, he began occupational therapy with full active range of motion, as well as a custom hand-based ulnar gutter splint. The splint was DC'd at four weeks. At six weeks, he will begin passive range of motion and strengthening. At 10 days postoperatively, patient's range of motion is improving significantly. Thank you for watching this video and I invite you to leave comments and let me know what you think.